Okay, hi. I'm Patty Whitney. I'm with BISCO, Bayou Interfaith Shared Community Organizing down in Terrebonne and Lafourche Parishes in southeastern Louisiana. We're the part of the country that's washing away into the Gulf of Mexico at the fastest rate of land loss in the world. We're also the part of the country that's received a significant amount of oil from the BP oil explosion. We're also the part of the country that depends on deep water drilling for our major tax base. We're also the part of the country that our second major economic driver is the seafood industry, which has now suffered significant losses. So we've we're been facing a lot. We're also the part of the country that in the last five years has undergone severe damage from Katrina, Rita, and then again in 2008, hurricanes Gustav and then Ike. Uh, we're tired. We're very, very tired of facing all of these disasters. Our ecosystem, the environment we live in, is a part of our community. Everyone here does things based on where we live and where our ancestors have, have lived for centuries. Uh, people here are not very transient. A lot of people here, most of them, can trace their ancestry here uh, within a 25-mile radius for several hundred years. We don't move away. We like it. it. It's a wonderful place, or it was. Our cultures are changing. Our communities are changing. Our communities are still impacted. Nine months after the oil disaster, we are, of course, told by BP and our federal agencies that the oil is gone. We don't have to worry. It's not there anymore. We just don't see it. A lot of people are actually seeing it, but there nobody hears about that. Um, but the, the use of the dispersants uh, against the advice of the EPA, the, the, the things that happen in the treatment of this oil to limit BP's liability uh, or, or harming people today. Uh, people are sick. Lots of people are sick. And lots of people are very, very worried. They're physically sick. They're mentally distressed. We, we had a whole region of the country that was suffering from PTSD already before this happened. It's not getting any better now. And as time progresses now, the real impacts, now that the cameras and, and the news media have packed up, now is the time when the real impacts are starting because they're impacting the core of our communities now. People that were trying to survive before, who knew how to make a lot out of a little, who lived on subsistence level, now no have, don't even have subsistence anymore. The entire communities who've never known how to access a social services system, now have nowhere to turn to and the systems are failing again because the systems are so regulated with bureaucracy that it's almost impossible for people to beg to survive for their families through no fault of their own. That's constantly forgotten when people have to go and are told, you need to quit drinking or you need to not smoke cigarettes and be depressed so we can give you mental health services. You know, we can't treat you for depression for everything that's happened to you until you, you give up smoking. That's going to make them really depressed. But all of the systems are failing people instead of trying to help people. And these are people who were minding their own business. But we must protect the oil company and BP from having to pay too much damages. And that's the message we're being getting given in our communities. And there's something wrong with that equation. And, and we really, really, really need to change it. But everyone's packed up and left. And nobody's listening. And so the tears are being cried and, and, and things are happening that are that are are not good. And nobody seems to care. And you know, even when our agencies and, and our government tries to help, 
like now they're finally starting to get some funding to come down for servicing the environmental health needs of the people from this disaster. It's only to do surveys and studies. There's no money coming down to help people, to help hands-on with people. It's big universities who are going to get study money for five or ten years to study the problem. What happens in the meantime to the people who don't have time to be studied, who, who are in distress right now? There's so much going on. The environment is, is in serious trouble. It's in serious danger. And we're constantly told, oh, don't worry. But the people are seeing something different than what they're being told. And so there's a lot of distrust. We're the same people who, who dealt with our, our government's problems with bureaucracy, not being able to handle a disaster with Katrina or Rita or Gustav. Or I. And now we're being told, oh, must, you must trust us that we're going to tell you the straight story. And it is just not there. So there's a problem in our communities and, and we need help. Just like the people are in distress individually, our communities are in serious distress the further it goes into this disaster.